purpose for our learning. We'll wait to all of you that have to move around, finish doing so. So it's not a distraction to nobody. We're glad for all of you that are here. You bear with us a while. We've been fighting with a fever and a cold all week. And I'm still fighting with it now. I would ask you to remember the Muldrow family in prayer in the Florence, South Carolina area. Mother Muldrow passed away Monday on Monday. And her mother, which was 101, passed away on Tuesday. On my way here this morning, I received a text from Elder Jones <clears throat> from Columbia, South Carolina. Mother Bush passed away. In fact, when he texts me, he says she passed away just a few minutes ago. From the Edgeville, South Carolina location. She was 94. Uh, so I believe in about two and a half weeks, we may have lost about eight to 10 elderly saints. And I want to say to Brother Darren, when you have our prayers, I understand that he lost his son and his wife is in the hospital with cancer. There's so much to pray for. I'm a firm believer that most people take every day for granted until something get a hold of them. But none of us should take nothing for granted Life is a gift that comes from God. And the Bible says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. In my position, the leadership position, you work with many people through the years and I often say seem like good people, God takes them. It seems like people that's up the devil live a long time. I mean a long time. But Mother Muldrow, she was with us over 30 years. And in fact, yeah, way over 30 years. One of those rare kind of mothers. What I mean is out of all the years she been under our leadership not one time that I have to reprove her or rebuke her for anything. She was never a problematic sink. Never. Never had a bad report. Never had to pull her away for gossiping. Never had to pull her side out of somebody's business. Never. That's a rare report. <laughs> but it's a blessing. Amen. So truly, I must say, I will greatly miss her. A hard worker and sincere and most of all, God-fearing. Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and depart from evil is understanding. Now God willing next week or rather this week coming we are looking to be in Memphis, Tennessee. God be our helper. And uh, the last of this month or rather before the last of this month we are to be in Greenville I believe South Carolina. So God willing, we hope you that are watching and listening and you that are here, that's able, meet us there to hear the word of God preached for the salvation of your soul. Uh, let me say this to all the brothers as I made an announcement to the brothers that baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
and to them that are interested in learning how to baptize. Of course, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ yourself. And you must have the Holy Ghost speaking in town. And we put the stipulation of being here at least two years. I did that because I love to evaluate one's stability. Yeah. I want someone in church and not a church and in church. And That's right. You're handling people's souls and you want someone that's stable. Yeah. Now we work on training those that are interested in performing baptisms and learning how this Wednesday. But we're going to move that to the following Wednesday. I won't be here this Wednesday, but the following week, God willing, uh, whatever that date is, someone that got a calendar may pull it up for me real quick. This Wednesday was the 15th. The following Wednesday is what? 22nd. So the following Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, seven o'clock, all of you brothers that are interested and learning how to baptize, we will be training you. I mean, training you, getting in baptismal water and everything. Not looking at film, no. <laughs> you will be physically trained. So you don't hurt yourself, nor the candidate. You know, you can baptize somebody wrong. I was watching a baptism that one of my brothers performed. And uh, after it was over, I saw it. He baptized an individual towards the steps. No, not at all. You baptize them away from the steps. We know that Jesus shed his blood, so we don't need no one to shed theirs. All ministers, all brothers that perform baptism, if their steps going down into a pool, never baptize the candidate towards the steps. Never. You can miscalculate the height and they head, neck and shoulders can get terribly hurt. I don't think no one want to get baptized to be in pain. <laughs> when you're baptized, you don't sl body slam nobody in the water. <laughs> I remember I, <laughs> I stopped one brother from baptizing. I said, look, why are you baptizing the people like they're just diving into the water. <laughs> he said, Pastor, I want to make sure they have it. Listen, I stopped them. I did. I stopped them from baptizing. I told him, I said, understand this. They know they have it because they're wet. And they don't need you to injure them, give them whiplash and nothing like that. Imagine someone suing you because you baptized them wrong. That's true. So I, he was so overzealous. I said, you, you don't need to baptize for a while. You just wait. All you got to do, take them down, bring them up. Not take them down and hold them down there. <laughs> Amen. The reason why I want to train you how to baptize because all baptisms are not the same. What I mean by that, the performance of them. You have some people that can't walk. <coughs> and I had to improvise. I had to get three brothers, one hole under the shoulder, one hole under the waist, and one hole the legs that would baptize themselves and have the Holy Ghost and got all those three, take the candidate in the water and use their legs to go down, not use their back. Uh, so it's different ways. Yeah, 
When someone in the water changed their mind, let them go. You don't force them in the water and say, well, <clears throat> you're in here now and you're not getting out. <laughs> when I was in the false church, that's the way it was when I came up. I remember that there was a young girl went to the water and the preacher was praying before he baptized her. She yelled out, I changed my mind. He said, you did what? She said, I changed my mind. He said, no, you don't. <laughs> he told her, you should not have gotten here with me. He said, you in here now, I'm not, letting you, I'm not letting you out. She said, wait a minute. If I don't want to be baptized, you can't force me. So they start fighting. <laughs> which is ridiculous. She was fighting to get out and he was fighting to hold her in. <laughs> he overpowered her. Grabbed her hands tight and body slammed her in water. <laughs> what was that? That's no baptism. When somebody changed their mind, let them out because they haven't truly repented. When someone truly repents, you don't have to fight with them to take them down in the water. So let that be a lesson to all brothers that perform baptisms. Anybody change their mind, let them go. I don't care if they already changed their clothes. If they change their mind, let them go back and change their clothes again. Let that man and let that woman go until they get a repentant heart and you will never have to force them to be baptized right. All right, let me brief you in the book of scriptures, 25th chapter. of the book of Matthew. I want to say to the saints of Jackson, Mississippi, we thank God for all of you. We're praying for you. Elder McLennan and Elder Butler of Jackson, Mississippi. Elder Butler of Tallahassee, Florida. I was glad to hear from you yesterday. I was surprised, but I was glad. I was very glad. Elder Hadley, I got your message. God willing, I'll get back in contact with you. Amen. Elder Richardson, Pastor Richardson, rather, of the island of St. Lucia, we thank God for you also, as I understand that the COVID virus is starting to spread back through the Caribbean area, through the islands, still here in America but it's starting to hit the islands all over again. Pray for the saints. Pray for the saints and pray for the ministers that God will keep them. God will protect them. We heard from a minister yesterday, young brother. And uh, his grandfather died who was a pastor, supposed to have been an apostolic church. And all of them were baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I asked him, well, other than you, who's baptized right? He said, nobody. He said, my, father, my grandfather, he died. And my father been listening to you for a while, and I, I'm in position now. I can make some decisions. He said, I would like to bring all of our churches up under you. He said, I'm only 30 years old. He said, uh, we have seven ministers. I say, how old are they? He said, well, the oldest one is in his 80s. I say, oh, they set in their ways, many of them. Yeah. I said, are they baptized? He said, no. None of them are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, well, before you decide to come under us, have a church meeting with all the members and all the old heads. 
because you got a lot of stubbornness on your hands. He said, Pastor Jennings, I tried it. None of them want to give in. I said, well, you meet me in Greenville. I talk to you one-on-one. -on -one God willing, when I meet with them, we'll try to set up a church business meeting. Talk to all these elders and members. What time they got left, see are they willing to save this soul for real. You know, if you want to be right, God will lead you to what's right. Whether you're young, middle-aged, or old, God will not allow you to depart this life before you hear what is right, and then he give you the chance to decide. <laughs> to obey it, thank God or turn against it. All right, the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew, if you will. All right, me ready? In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, <coughs> and at verse 1. Yes. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven <coughs> be, likened shall be like unto ten virgins. Unto ten virgins. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Yes. The five of them were wise. Five of them were wise. And five were foolish. Five were foolish. You always got five <coughs> fools or five wise folk, but I'm used to having more fools than wise folk. I talk to more fools than wise people. It's hard to get through to a fool. Point him or her to, to what the Bible says. You might as well be prepared for a wrestling match. And that fight will come from them that say they already have the Holy Ghost. There's something in the Bible that they don't agree with. They'll tell you, I know the Bible's right, but there should never be buts when God talks. If I'm not up to it, just ask God to help me. That's it. Because there's nothing in God's word can I change. Nothing. I, will, I wish I could change many things in here. But there's nothing at all can I change that God has in the scriptures. Let us remember the very first sentence that Brother Moretti read. Listen at this. Then shall the kingdom of heaven God's be, kingdom, kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. You see where he compared? He compared to them here on earth. Letting you know what it's going to be like. Listen at this. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Yes. Which took their lamps <coughs> and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps. They took their lamps. And took no oil with them. Glory to God. What good is carrying a lamp with no oil? The lamp represents a vessel. The oil represents the spirit of God. Now, how far you think you can possibly get? Your body is the vessel. Your body is the temple of the living God. If you are deprived of oil, what kind of spirit or fire or power can you possibly have? You know, this is why it's important to come to God's house. The Bible said, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is where you can get your lamps trimmed. 
Get some oil in your lamp. Thank God that way your wick burns brighter and brighter and brighter. A fool is one that sit moreover. Hear the word of God and just pick out what they want. All the word of God is right. Everything. When I was young coming up, well, my mother said, all right, Nikki, you're Rocky and Ricky and Chris and Tony and Ann and Pixie and Cookie, all of you, come on and eat. The rule was, eat whatsoever is set before you. It wasn't like these modern parents. They ask you what you want to eat. No, no. No, no, these modern parents ask their children, what you want to eat? Well, I want this one. I, well, I fix, and they fix about eight different meals. No, when we came up, one meal for everybody. That's the way God had it. One gospel, glory to God for everybody. Now everybody must get oil in their lamp the same way. The problem with many of us, we became content being an empty vessel. I don't understand how many of us can get that way. I would never understand that if you're empty. And you know when you're empty. Why would we be satisfied being an empty vessel before God? The Bible says, listen at this. They Read that, it again. Then they that were foolish. No, the very first sentence. Then, That's what I want. Then shall the kingdom then of heaven. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Now remember. The people is the church. That's it. The church is not the building. The building just take on the name of what's in it. When Jesus appeared in the heavens, he ain't coming back for no mortar, for no lights and brick and all of that stuff. No, he's coming for lively stones. A people that is sanctified, <coughs> full of the spirit, Baptizing the water in the name of Jesus Christ and is intact in the church. And the thing that keeps us intact is the mortar of the word of God. That's it. So if the kingdom of heaven is like 10 virgins, <clears throat> five wives and five, five foolish, foolish, let us look at the fools first. Come on, son. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Yes. But the wise took oil in their vessels. The wise took oils in their vessels. With their lamps. With their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, <laughs> they all Now slumbered. listen, listen. While the bridegroom tarried. He ain't come yet. Tarried. He's waiting to come. That's it. But both sets of virgins are waiting for his arrival. Some have oil, some don't. That's it. Which class are you? Everybody in here, thank God, is waiting for the bridegroom. Aren't we? Amen. Some of you have oil, some of you don't. Some had oil, uh -huh. but lost it. Some is running low on fuel yeah. because they are distracted by other things. Right. <coughs> what class will you be in when Jesus came? 
I want to be in the class of the wives. I won't let nobody, thank God, tamper with my oil. I'm going to make sure that my lamp stay full, full to the rim. Thank God if you got to stay by yourself and be with yourself long as your lamp is full. Yeah. Why do you say that, Pastor Jennings? The Apostle Paul says, all men forsook me. He declared no man stood with me. He said, but God stood with me that by me the preaching might be fully known to all the Gentiles. You know, when Jesus come, he's coming for you personally. Am I right, I said? How much oil, thank God, is in your lamp today? And do you have any oil at all? Hallelujah. Thank, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. You know, I tarried for the Holy Ghost 50 years ago. Thank God. And uh, someone said, well, don't you want the same amount of oil now that when you received it 50 years ago? I wanted it to be more. No. I want more of it. Glory to God. I want to be closer to God now than I was 50 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Amen. If I'm closer to God now than I was 50 years ago, I'm stronger now than I was 50 years ago, and I can endure more than I could 50 years ago. I once said, so you know, you ever meet some people walking with God? You ever had somebody tell you, well, you're not the same. You're not the way you was 50 years ago. You're not the same. I don't want to be the same. Amen. Like a little baby grow to a boy, then grow to a man. A mother that's 70 years old don't want to be carrying around a 50 year old son breastfeeding a 50-year-old son, burping a 50-year-old son. There have to be some growth, some development. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to see some growth here. Some development. Walking with God 50 years and I'm just as worse as I was 30 years ago. No! Or it take God, I'll be dissatisfied. I'll be dissatisfied because now I'm in a spiritual condition that I should not be in. Glory to God, glory to God. So no, I don't want to be the same. When I receive the Holy Ghost, I want to be better. Better now than I was then, 13, 14, and 15, no. If I'm going to be the same, I'm in bad shape. Eh? Amen. All right, what did he say, son? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Yeah. Which took their Give lamps. one of them bottles there for me, brother. Thank you, sir. All right, let's have it. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Yes. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Uh -huh. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Well, one thing I say about the foolish, at least they uh, took the lamps. <laughs> took their lamps. That's the way foolish people are now. They take their Bibles, but they don't care about what's in there. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> they come to church and watch the program and hear the word of God preached, but have no intentions on obeying it. Amen. You better come on and get your lamp trimmed while you hear the word of God preached moreover. You better take advantage of it while you got life. 
Hear this now. They that were foolish took their lamps <coughs> and took no oil with them. Yes. But the wise took oil in their vessels and with their lamps. Yes. While the bridegroom tarried. While the bridegroom tarrieth. They <coughs> all slumbered and slept. Glory to God. Everybody was sleeping while the bridegroom tarried. tarrieth. Many now hear the word of God preach. Uh -huh. Eyes are open, but spiritually they are asleep. Bible says awake to righteousness. It's time for everybody in the world, wake up, wake up. The word of God, God, God Almighty have it here now. He have it falling in his last days like never before and the people are still sleeping. There are several millions that are waking up by God's permission. I was reading a letter before I came down here from Italy. Man wrote me, heard the word of God. He said he was in a church and that the church closed down and haven't opened up since COVID. He said one of the best things happened when he caught the message over YouTube. Amen. He said he wants to be baptized now in the name of the Lord Jesus. So whenever you get the chance to get your lamp trimmed, the oil is in God's word. <clears throat> in fact, when you go to the word, you strike oil. I done struck oil years ago, brother. I'm rich today. <laughs> Glory to God. Eh? I struck oil. I'm rich. Bible said we have this treasure, hallelujah, and earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. There's nothing under the sun more richer than God's everlasting word. That's it. Eh? What is it here? While the bridegroom tarried. While the bridegroom tarried. They all slumbered and slept. They all slumbered, slept. And at midnight, uh oh, there at was a, midnight, there was a cry made. There was a cry made. Behold, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet. Wait, him. wait, wait, wait now. There was a cry made. Cry made. Now, all were asleep. They all slumbered. They're and slept. sleeping naturally. And many are asleep subconsciously. When the word of God is preached, you know whether you sleep or not. When you sleep, when the word of God is preached, subconsciously your mind is everywhere. All over the place, other than in God's word. When you're home, you got a chance to tune into the word of God all day, several times a day. But instead, we look at everything, listen to everything but God's word. That's why some of us uh, are so blind and so ignorant. And the Bible used this term, destitute of the truth, barren, because the word of God is not in us. And when the word of God is not there like it should be, it opens up the door to give room for something else to come in. And that's exactly what happened. That's why many of us are so weak and far away from the word of God. We don't pay the word of God no mind. We don't get the Bible and follow us in the Bible. We don't listen to what is being taught. You know, you can hear, but not listen. You can hear, but not listen. You know, when I really listen to a thing, I can distinguish the sound. But when I hear a thing, well, the sound may blend in. You know, when I really hear a car backfire, I may get it mixed up from a gunshot. But if I'm really in tune with it, I know the gunshot from a backfire. When you're in tune with God's word, you know.
where you're lacking in God and you know where you need to come up in the word of God. Why? I'm constantly examining myself. Do you know every time you come to church, you come to God's hospital? Thank God this is the examination room. Amen. And the word of God here is my x-ray machine. It goes all down in your soul. Amen. Penetrate the mind. Penetrate the heart. Show you where you are. Let you know whether you're right or wrong or whether you're close to God or distant from him. You got to have the type of mind you are determined to be as close to God as you can. Man, I'm more determined to be as close to God than I am the people. Yeah. Do you understand? Amen. You better be closer to God than you are to your husband. You better be closer to God than you are to your wife. And you better be closer to God than you are to your children. Amen. Glory to God. What did he say, son? And at midnight. At midnight. There was a cry made. Glory to God. We don't know where we're going to be when Jesus appears in the heavens. But it's maybe midnight somewhere. And it may be daytime somewhere. When he comes, I'm pretty sure somewhere it's going to be dark. Somewhere it's going to be light. But whether it be dark or light, everything going to see the coming of the Lord. They're going to tremble. Heaven and earth shall shake like a man drunk off wine. The governments of the world shall be tumbled over. Amen. Thank God in the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first to meet the Lord in the air. Do you hear this? And at midnight there was at a cry. At midnight a cry was made. Behold. Behold. The bridegroom cometh. The bridegroom come. Go ye out to meet him. Go ye out to, to do meet. what? Go ye out to meet him. Go out and meet him. Can you imagine that? Folks run to meet materialism. But that day gonna come, you're gonna meet the Lord. The bridegroom come, a cry was made, go ye out to meet him. To meet him. Now, remember, five had oil, five did not have oil. Five ready to meet him, five not ready to meet him. But in any condition, in neither condition, that, that slow down the coming of the bridegroom. Your condition do not slow down God's coming. You can cry all day and say, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. By you living today, he's showing you mercy. He's showing you mercy. What you need to do is just say, Lord, let me get right. Let me get right. He's already showed his mercy by letting you be alive. He's doing that already. The question is, what are you going to do with the mercy he presently given to you? Hear me, hear me good now, hear me good. What is it, son? And at midnight there was a cry made. Give chapter and verse again. In the book of Matthew chapter 25 and at verse 6. At midnight. There was a cry made. There was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Mm -hmm. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Now, all 10 were virgins. They had the same title. But only five had oil. Five were empty. You can get 10 churchgoers. 
That don't mean when the Lord come, all 10 is going to go back with the Lord. You got tens of thousands going to church, millions going to church. But when the groom come, all those millions is not going to be happy about his arrival. Not at all. Or it's that God, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, said Jesus, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a man that built his house on the rock. Storm come, wind come, rain come, beat upon that house, and the house did not fall. Because it was founded upon the rock. Now, our rock is Christ. And God's church is founded upon him. He declared upon this rock, thank God I'll build my church. Hallelujah. And the gates of hell, thank God shall not prevail against it. Now when the God of heaven appear to present unto himself his glorious church, not having a spot, wrinkle, any such thing, but that it should be holy. Which class of virgins, which class of clean folk? You know, because the virgin naturally was clean, but they had a deficiency. No oil in the lamp. So being clean naturally just is not enough for God. Not enough for the Lord. You got to have some oil. You got to have the spirit. The Bible says the body without the spirit is dead. Now, having the spirit of God is not just being filled with God. Having the spirit of God also is having the word of God in you. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So even if you got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, but reject the word of God, fight the word of God in any form, you are rejecting that same spirit that resides within your house. And by you rejecting that same spirit that is in your house, you are decreasing the oil that is in your lamp. Because you need this. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. The thing that keep your lamp trimmed is God's word. Without the word of God, there, get this. Without the word of God, I will go to hell even after I speak in tongue with the Holy Ghost. I still go to hell. Hear me good now. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me well. <clears throat> this is the thing that keep all you in my lap. Once the Lord God came into me, filled me with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit of God give utterance, I need this to keep my lamp trimmed. Don't you hear me stressing the point? You got to stay in the Word. If Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are spirit and they are life. What kind of life you have just with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and you're not following the Word being preached? If the words that he speak is life, then how are you going to have eternal life just having the Holy Ghost only in this life? That's why I ask, how much oil? You that baptized with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, thank God how much oil is really in your lap. How low did it get? over the years. How long did it get? Do you fast? No. Hardly pray? No. Only time your prayers when something go wrong. How faithful are you coming to church? Are you more faithful when you was in a false church 
or are you more faithful when you come to the truth? How dedicated you are in church? How much work do you do in church? Or are you complaining about how much work others do? What do you do? Well, they are every auxiliary. How many auxiliaries are you on? None. Shut your mouth then. <laughs> One scripture says, do your own business. We would say, mind your own business. Everything that pertains to the work of God. When a man or a woman got the right spirit, and truly love the Lord like the scriptures require, they will put their hands to find out, what can I do? What can I do for God and for the work of God? <coughs> you really think I'd be traveling like I am if I didn't love the work of God? No. Amen. I can be outside at home. Looking around, that deer getting on my nerves, eating plants. Yeah. Amen. That can be looking at hummingbirds, humming around, and looking at all type of things. But no, we're traveling, laboring, trying to save as many in our lifetime. Just like God came and took the lives of many of the elderly, I often wonder, when is God going to stop, uh, stop us? Where will I be if it's his will to stop us? I hope he stopped me while I'm preaching. Hey Amen. When I'm done preaching, then you come get me when I sit down. All right. Or come get me while I'm asleep. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. If I finish preaching and then God come get me. All right. That's your last message. Gone. Come get me. All right. That's a good way to go. Hey Amen. Or well, let me go praying if it's his will. Fall on my face down there praying. Oh, you want to come interrupt my prayer? Let me finish it first. And you want to, then, if you want to get, then if you want to get me, all right. But at least let me, let me get my amen out. Glory to God. When the bridegroom come, the various scenarios that I made, you might be praying. You might be asleep. You might be eating dinner. You might be going shopping. You might be cutting out coupons. You might be at a car dealer. You might be getting dressed, going to church. Then the Lord interrupt your life. You won't have time to get nothing together. You won't have time to apologize to nobody. You won't have time to correct nothing. Whatever thoughts you have, whatever feelings you have, whether they're right or wrong, that's the way God's going to come for you. I God man is enough to make you tremble. Yes, it is. Eh? Glory oh, to God. Do you hear this? And at midnight. Yes, chapter and verse again. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25 and at verse 6. Yes. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose. All those virgins got up. And trimmed their lamps. Trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the, the wise. The foolish said to the wise. Give us of your oil. <laughs> Old Logan said it best for all of us. Give us of your oil. Of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. Our lamps are what? Are gone out. What condition is your lamp? Mm. What condition is your lamp? What condition are you in spiritually? Where God at in your life? Where? Is God less in your life today than he was five years ago? 
If there's the slightest decrease in your spiritual way with God, you have no one to blame but yourself. Now you make it, you can try to bring the argument to God. Oh Lord, I experienced this. Oh Lord, I experienced that. God ain't gonna pay none of that no mind. Because out of all of our experience, he taught us how to navigate through all of them and still have our lamps trimmed with oil. And he still showed us the only way our lamps go empty or start to go down is because we was around the oil, but we did not use it effectively. So we sit right in church and spiritually die. Sit right in church. Spiritually die. Just die. And do absolutely nothing to make ourselves live. <clears throat> this is a warning that God wants to give you today. Human family, you that are watching, God has given you the greatest chance you ever had since you've been born. To get yourself right with him. Amen. Because it doesn't matter who you're right with on earth. If you're not right with God in heaven, who you are right with on earth don't mean nothing. That's it. Are you listening? Amen. Hear this. Matthew chapter 25 and at verse 8. What is it? And the foolish said unto the wise. The foolish said to the wise. Give us of your oil. Give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. Our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so. No, we ain't doing that. Lest there be not enough for us and you. Wait a minute. You know, there's a time you got to be greedy in this. That's right. <laughs> Yes, Do you hear what the wise said to the, the fools? But the wise answered saying, not so. Not so. Lest there be not enough for it's us not and you. For us. And you. And you. But go ye rather to them that sell. You and, go to them that sell. And buy for yourselves. Get it on your own. That's right. That's right. Salvation is personal. That's what salvation is. It's personal. You're not to wait on nobody. Who are to God, you have to want God for yourself. Buy for yourselves. Many men say, you know, Pastor Jennings, I want to be baptized, but I'm waiting on your wife. Wrong answer. I want to be baptized, but I'm waiting on my husband. Wrong answer. Death not waiting on your wife when it come for you. Death not waiting for your husband when it come for you. Amen. Peter said, save yourself. Didn't you say so? That's it. Save yourself. That's it. Glory to God. What do you think the scriptures mean? What do you think the scriptures mean? Naked. You came into the world. Naked. You shall return. You didn't come into this world with no girlfriend or boyfriend or no wife or husband. You didn't come in the world with that and you're not going to leave with it. That's the way it is with salvation. Glory to God, you got to be selfish about salvation. Got to be greedy. Hallelujah. Greedy about it. I want it. Glory to God, that girlfriend tell you, I don't want it yet. That's your business. I want it. That boyfriend tell you, I don't want it yet. That's your business. I want it. I'm going after it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, I'm going after it. Glory to God. When I go after it, I may end up leaving that man or leaving that woman, but thank 